Hi, I'm Chris. I created a quick converter over the um, past couple of weeks to uh, convert over spreadsheets and several other file types into IIFs because I like QuickBooks and I don't really want to learn another system and uh, I'm just familiar with it. So um, I've been using it for like 20 years um, and it works great. So uh, I'm going to go through the, the program um, right now and show you how to use it. So first thing you got to do is you got to, in order to use it and make, make use of how fast it is, well, really first back up your data, just back up your data, create a local backup, create a whatever, wherever you store your backups and uh, do that first. Always do that before importing any IIF, or really any data. Um, the next thing you need to do is you're going to export your existing lists um, out. So select chart of accounts, select your customer list, select your, where is it? Class list and other names. And you can export that and save it and it'll overwrite and cool. It's been exported. Now, just so you know, I made a different version of it for this example. So a little less of my personal data being displayed here. So you can see all your, uh, I can't, or all my accounts really, um, pay a uh, bunch of pays. Other names are at the top, customers are at the bottom, and then classes are over here. Um, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and import the transaction data from the bank. And uh, in this case, I'm going to be working with that account. It will also work with other types of accounts um, like credit cards. Um, and other stuff too. Um, but right now um, we're gonna do an example with the bank and it's very similar with the other ones. So I'm gonna choose the file. And in this case, we're gonna do sample transactions 01, but we could just as soon, oh, let's see what's inside this one. Uh, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's see, it's, it looks like a little bigger than the other one. All right. So first thing it does is it actually kind of uh, matches the, the, the header row. And if it's on the first row, it selects it and uh, matches up the QB fields, the QuickBook fields that are needed in the, to import to the column names. In this case, you have to have the top four uh, minimum matched up. So date, description, amount, or actually it's uh, the top three have to be matched up. You can do it in another way where you match up payees and accounts. If you type those into your CSV manually from your account, copy and paste or however you do it, and it will um, allow you to select the, the, the columns. Or if you want to do, if you have a separated um, credit and debit columns, you can do that as well. If it's on a different row, just select the other row. So in this case, we have a date, we have a description, we have an amount. It's automatically made because it, these, the text items here match up, so it automatically does it. You can view the, the text right there, and if your, your comma separated values, your spreadsheet are in another format with a different separator, just select it and that will uh, work for you. You can also view your data kind of there. It's a little small, but um, it's, it'll give you an idea of what you're actually importing. Um, so let's close that up. And if you want to go back in there, just hit that button again. Um, if you get down in here, down to the next sections, then you go back and make changes. It will overwrite this other stuff uh, quite a bit. So be careful. Um, open the bulk matcher. And in this case, we have like, let's say Home Depot. Let's just start right here. Um, you can see that there are several Home Depots. Um, this column is actually the, each one's a unique payee um, on the row. So. I want to group them all together. So I'm going to type in Home Depot. I'm going to hit the group button and it's going to match them all. Now I have them all in one. Um, so visually it shows up like that. And then the payee in this case is Home Depot. And that pulled in from the, from the IIF export I had. And then the account is repairs and maintenance. And then the class, let's put it on Cedar. And we're good there. Now, automatic payments. This has already been imported in my other bank account. Um, it's coming from another bank account that I already imported. eBay, I'm going to also uh, group together. So I'm going to put in my match text. This is the match text right here. And that's what it works off of. So we're going to group those. And then we're going to do this as eBay. Um, bought some more repair stuff for, the, for Cedar. And so I put in Cedar right there. Um, and Ganal Lumber, so let's, uh, that's just one, so I'll type in Ganal, 
And this is uh, another repairs and it's Cedar. And more Home Depot. Now this didn't match up because there's a space here. There's no space there. So you can see that it's gonna have to be ended again separately. That was Home Depot online, repairs and maintenance. Cedar, this is probably all repairs and maintenance, isn't it? Oh no, Nationwide, great. Um, so let's do Nationwide. So let's say I didn't have Nationwide um, in, a, in the system, right? It's, it's right there, but let's say I, I didn't have it Nationwide two separate words. It's going to ask me to create a new page. This is actually going to be imported into QuickBooks with your IIF. So if you create a new uh, customer or other name um, or uh, account or a class, that will work with uh, uh, your IIF and be pulled into QuickBooks automatically. So let's try the nationwide as an example. It's not spelled right, but good example. So there it is. This is insurance. Um, and this was for Cedar. All right. And let's say this is Subway. And this is Meals and Entertainment. And let's say this is Chris Kratz. And then that's Vista, Vista Paint. Um, and we could put a new account if we wanted to, Paint. And um, hit that. And let's go in and it's uh, whatever account type I want. Um, and in this case, let's say it's an expense and I could even have it be a sub expense of another thing. So we could do it as a sub expense of repairs and maintenance. And that will actually pull right into QuickBooks when you um, create the IIF here. And so this is Cedar and then we're done. So just close that. It saves all the stuff. You can come back here, work in it some more if you want to. And we just apply the bulk matches. Now, this is the transactions. You can see here that this is going to be skipped. It's crossed out. And that if I don't want it to be skipped, if I want it to actually be pulled in, I can just bring it back or I can take it off again. Let's say I want to skip Ganon. I take that one off. Boom, it's gone. Easy. Um, I can make the changes across the whole transaction um, uh, table. One, uh, any of these rows, I, it works the same as the other system does. So oh, that didn't <laughs> Eat your words. Let's see if that works. Oh, come on. Please. Why? There. Okay. <laughs> A little funny stuff sometimes. I mean, uh, let me know if you hit stuff like that. And, uh, I'll see if I can replicate it. That's just another bug. I'm going to have to figure out why it didn't do that right there. Anyway, so you can see all your accounts, uh, your classes. The memos are going to match the description. Um, this helps for me when I'm reconciling to make sure everything's kind of copacetic and done correctly. Um, and it's a great way to record the, the data right from my, um, my uh, statements in my register in QuickBooks. Um, let's say that that has been imported backwards. Sometimes um, I've copy and pasted stuff from spreadsheets and the way they represent the information in the spreadsheet is backwards to how QuickBooks imports it. You know, this is a check to, uh, to all these companies and these are deposits. This is a return, but let's say it's backwards. You just invert it. And now it's going to uh, correct that stuff if it's all backwards for whatever reason. Um, just make sure you check, you know, you, you take double check that. So um, now we've double checked all our stuff. Yeah, it's perfect. No, okay, uh, I don't want that one. And uh, we go down here and we can put in our email address. And this is just gonna help me kind of get an idea of how many people are using this. Um, and that's important for um, me just to know if I'm onto something or not. And it's basically it. Uh, uh, I'm only keeping track of how many rows and how many IIFs are being generated. I just want to know. Um, so if I can create cool stuff and people are using it, then I can, you know, make more cool stuff. So now the, the, the code's been emailed to me. So I just copy the little code and paste it in here, sign in, and we can generate. So here's the IIF. There it is. And if we look at the top of it, if I'm not scrolling all over the place. We can see um, here's our new um, account that I created. Here's the new other name. And if I would have created anything else like a customer, that'll also be imported at the top. It imports those first in the IIF, and then it goes down and actually does the transactions. And this will all be pulled in right into QuickBooks register for you to make your life easier. Um, so we can get out of there. And if I download it, it's going to download to the downloads with the account name right there. 
Um, real quick, other thing I can do, if you wanna clear it out, just um, hit reload. Again, I'm not pulling any of your sensitive data into my servers, really don't wanna deal with it. Um, I, it's, it's just too much of a hassle. <laughs> I wanna make this as fast as possible. So everything's basically handled right here in the browser. So let me do another one um, where I can show you like a little bit more complicated uh, situation. So let's do a Venmo, which is another company I believe by Intuit. Um, the data is a little different the way they give it out. And there are a lot of other kind of gotchas that I tried to account for when I do it. So this is good because they, um, a good example, because they put the, the header row on the third one. So we select the third row. Now it's going to have the, the correct options there. And you can go back to the first row and you can see there's nothing there. So select the third row. And then we actually identify the date is date time. The description in this case is spread across several columns. Um, so I created this uh, way of doing it so that it's a little unique. So I do from, and then I add another one to the description, to, and then I add another one to my description, which is my funding source. And then I add another one, which is my destination. This is gonna give me a good idea when I'm doing the matcher as to what is going on. And then with the amount, in this case, it's a single column and it has positives and negatives and it's a total. And you can see right here that they have positive amounts and negative amounts. So uh, if you wanted to review everything in text to make any changes, you can do that right there. Um, and uh, well, anyway, that's the that's how that is handled. The other option is some some um, bank accounts and credit cards have a separate credit and debit accounts. So I give the option to separate those two um, and select them individually if you want. Um, and that will uh, be processed and turned into transaction data correctly. The other thing is if you want, I don't know if I went over this, but if you have uh, payees and accounts that are set, you want to manually enter those, you can do that by hitting that button. But let's go back to description. We're going to go from, we're going to go to, we're going to go funding source, and we're going to go uh, destination. And let's just wrap this up. Down here, you can see, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can see all the data is, is, is brought over and we can go manually down here. You know, this is an accounting company and we go, um, you know, whatever account accounts receivable. And, uh, you know, if this is a, a robot cam dream, whatever, um, then we can skip this one if we wanted to. Same, same deal. Um, if we open the bulk matcher, you're going to see all those descriptions are broken down here for you um, automatically. So uh, you see there's Volga right there and uh, we can um, create her as a new account or whatnot if we want to. Um, if you have questions, just go ahead and write me. This is uh, we can check. Now we've made a lot of changes. Um, I don't have to log in again or do my email address thing again. It, 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 it's going to keep track of you. Um, so just uh, view your IIF and that's it. And maybe in the future, I'll store like your, your data, the bulk match stuff um, to make it easier. I was thinking about doing that maybe um, to make it easier for everybody. That was basically uh, where we're at. So let me know if you have any other questions. Um, you can do it right here with the feedback and send me a, a letter. Um, and of course, I have, you know, privacy terms and conditions and uh other stuff here that uh, if you want to read about, um, uh, feel free. Thanks so much.